trailer drum brakes 1920 technology versus trailer disc brakes today's technology this is eric stark with the smart rv or podcast delivering the smarts you need to enjoy the freedom of the rv lifestyle without the fear of breaking down all right so we're getting into episode number 97 we're getting closer to our 100th episode that'll be coming may 6th and that's going to be a live stream so we'll have more information on that as we get closer on where we're going to do it and how you can log on so i want to give everybody a word of caution many rvers well many people in general shop on amazon Amazon amazon.com has a tremendous amount of rv parts on there and you need to be cautious of buying some of them because they're knockoffs they're not original equipment and some of them have a very very low quality threshold you know you think about this if a thermostat for let's say a domatic air conditioner is normally about 80 or 90 dollars and you can get one on Amazon for $17. To me, there's something wrong with that. And, you know, I've actually spent the money and I've bought some of these things that are knockoffs that people tell me about. And they're junk. You know, I bought some toilet valves. Five out of five were bad. And, you know, the company will send you new ones. But when five out of five are bad, what's the point? And you have to be careful. And I'm not saying everything on Amazon is bad, but you need to be cautious. And I highly recommend not shopping there and supporting your local RV stores or your or RV only websites. Quite often you can get stuff in the same time, depending on where you're at. I know if you're in certain areas, you can get it the same or next day. Where I'm at in Montana, they say it's two days and it's not, it's four days to get anything. And they say it's for two days, though, and I think that's what lures people in. Or the minute you put it in your cart, the shipping time changes. And you have to be cautious. And I'm not saying Amazon's the worst place in the world, but I'd prefer everybody to support the RV industry. You know, you own an RV, and eventually, if you quit supporting the stores, there won't be any customer service. You know, buying stuff on Amazon is great to return, but once it's out of their 30-day window or whatever the window is that they have, you know, it's pretty hard to get stuff warrantied buying it on Amazon because where do you go? When you buy it from a local RV store or even a website that sells RV-only products, you're going to get much better service. So that's just a word of caution. I'm not saying not to shop there, just be cautious. Now, come to July in Montana. We are pushing that still. We want to see everybody come to the Bitterroot Valley in july and visit our store we want to meet you we want to see who you are and you can see who we are meet us and montana is an awesome place and july is a great month to be in montana there's tons of stuff to do like i said before we're working on it we're trying to get um all the places to go compiled we're slowly going to get it on the website it takes some time but we'll start getting that done pretty quick here you know, we're always behind here because it's only a couple of us running this show and it takes a lot to do, but we get it done eventually. So be patient with us and heck, break out your own map. Look at Montana and see if it's where you want to go. Break out a map of the U S see where you can stop along the way. And May 6th is our hundredth episode. Like I said, we'll be doing that live and we're going to figure out where we're going to do it. And we're looking at YouTube. That seems to be the one. And if that's the case, that'll be pretty easy. You'll just go to our channel on YouTube, but I'll let you know. So living the RV life is what you are doing. You own an RV. Even though some say you have to be a full-timer to live the RV life, I disagree with that. If you own an RV, you're, you can live the RV lifestyle. Because whenever you get in that RV, you've changed your lifestyle to, to live that way. So now... You own an RV, it might be your full-time house or your vacation getaway pad. Either way, you have to have certain information to do certain things. For example, now you know where this is going. This is always related to RV parts and accessories and what's best for you, how you can get things done. So, for example, if your refrigerator quits working and you're positive, you've tested it out and it needs a new circuit board. So you jump in your car You run down to the RV store and you tell the guy at the parts counter, 
I need a new circuit board. And he says, what's the model of the, or you, and he says, well, actually, you say, I need a new circuit board. And of course, he has to say, what is that for? Your water heater, your refrigerator, your furnace, your air conditioner, you know. And you say, no, it's for my refrigerator. He says, okay, what's the model of your refrigerator? You say, I don't know. So right there, the conversation just about is over. Because if you don't know the model number, he can't look it up. And please do not say that this is a standard RV part that every RV has them. You know, I've come to realize the only thing standard on RVs, and you've probably heard me say this before, is the tires and the color of them. They're black. You know, there are some things that are common, but when it comes to refrigerators, there's there's two different brands, Dometic and Norcold, and there's hundreds of models. And you know, to ask a guy, you know, how is he going to figure that out? It can be pretty difficult. And some dealerships, if you bring in your VIN number, they can look it up. If they sell new RVs, they might be able to look it up if they sell that brand. So that could give you an edge, but keep this in mind. If the refrigerator is older and it's been replaced at some time, then the information that dealership would have or what's in their system would be inaccurate. So it's always best to get the model number off of the appliance. The owner's manuals might have model numbers in them, but quite often they're not complete or the manual covers a broad spectrum of models, but not all the parts can be the same. So always get the model number off of the appliance or the component. If it's an awning, a water pump, it's for sure that way. And, you know, take pictures too. So you go to the store, you ask for the model number, and of course you're going to have to go home if you don't have it. Even if you have the circuit board, sometimes that, that can kind of help depending on the store. If they have a big um, selection of, let's say, refrigerator circuit boards and the guy wants to go in the back and open them all up and compare, or if he can identify yours, if it's a real popular model and they sell a lot of circuit boards for it, then, hey, it might not be a problem. But just go with the model number, and you can bring the circuit board too. If you're replacing it, you might as well take it out. That way you can match it up because some refrigerators, you know, when you look them up, there's two different, three different models of circuit boards for them, depending on that particular refrigerator. So go into the store prepared is really what I'm getting to, getting at here. And, you know, another way to do this, you know, most everybody has a smartphone. Take a picture of everything in your RV. You know, if you just walk around it one day and you started snapping pictures of model numbers or things that don't have model numbers, like let's say a screen door latch, there's a lot of different screen door latches. And they all kind of look the same, but they're not. So if you take a picture of the screen door latch, you take a picture of your water inlets, you take a picture of the model number on the stove, the refrigerator, and you're armed. Then just get them kind of organized in your phone. Make a folder for them. Or if you use iCloud, you you can make a folder in the cloud. There's different ways to organize it on your phone. Pictures save so much time, especially when they contain a model number. But always have the model number if you can. It makes it so much easier because not everybody can look it up by year, make, and model. And even then, it can be very inaccurate. So what I'm doing is I've made a list, and I'm going to put it on our website. It'll probably be in a couple different places, probably under Living the RV Lifestyle. And maybe under do-it-yourself repairs. It's going to be a list of everything that you should take a picture of or have a model number for. And like a tire, you know, it doesn't necessarily have a model number, but it has a tire size, like a 205, 75, 15. So you want to know those things. And it's handy, believe me. I have a lot of stuff on my phone. I walk into a store and boom, I'm prepared. You know, I can show the guy a picture. Let's say uh, it's something for my house. Or I'm calling, us, calling around looking for a part for a furnace, you know, my own furnace. I've got the model number in front of me. You know, it makes it easier. All right, so go to the website, thesmartrver.com. Go to the Living RV Lifestyle section and click on, on Model Number Checklist, and it'll all be there. Okay, guys, how many of you are driving a trailer or pulling a trailer and it has drum brakes? Raise your hands. All right, I can see everybody out there. There's a lot of you that are doing that, right? Probably about 98% of you are using drum brakes. You know, drum brakes are basically a 100-year-old technology. They came out in the 1920s, and they haven't changed much since. You know, a drum brake system typically has about five to 600 braking pounds. Now, in the early 1960, cars started going coming out with power-assisted brakes, you know, power brakes. That helped and increased it to about 800 pounds. But unfortunately, 
on a trailer, you don't have power assist brakes. You're the truck you're driving to pull the trailer might, but the trailer itself doesn't. So you're back to the five, 600 braking pounds. Okay. That's not a lot. You know, it might work for you depending where you're at, where you live. Maybe there's times you've thought about it. Can I do something better? And there is something you can do better, but drum brakes, here's the problem. Before I get into what the solution is, we got to talk about the problem. So with drum brakes, you are constantly having to adjust the brake controller while you're towing the trailer. Have you noticed that? I certainly do. I'll be honest. My trailer has drum brakes. I haven't switched it over to disc brakes. I'm thinking about selling the trailer. So there's no point in putting the money into that right now. So the brake can, or the brake controller needs to be adjusted and the brake controller is what activates the trailer brakes. You know, you got it on your dash. Some trucks come with them built in now, but also, you know, you have to adjust the brake controller, but what's happening out at the trailer, whether you have a tandem axle or a single axle, the brakes are, are getting older. The magnets themselves are getting older. They become less effective as they heat up. Their grabbing strength can change. So, you know, the magnet, it's a, you know, usually a round or oval shaped magnet and when you activate your brake pedal that magnet gets pushed out and it grabs onto the brake the side of the brake drum there's a smooth surface there so the magnet has an, have, has to have enough strength to grab the side of the drum and then it gets pushed or pulled however you want to look at that and it expands the brake pads or the brake shoes excuse me brake shoes and so that magnet become can become less effective you know, if a grease seal fails, it's going to have grease on the brake shoes and the drums, and then that won't work at all. So the brake shoes are going to need to be adjusted regularly to get them out closer to the brake drums. And the brake shoes themselves, you know, they start to wear out as you use them, and then they have to be adjusted again because of that. So there's things happening there. There's a lot of moving parts in a brake drum. As brakes heat up, they become less effective. You know, in fact, you can lose the entire ability to slow or stop the vehicle. All types of brake shoes or pads, even on disc brakes, can overheat. But it's more likely to happen with drum brakes on a trailer. You know, going down hills is the greatest failure of trailer brakes. Now, I know from experience what it's like to lose your brakes going down a hill. Now, I wasn't pulling a travel trailer, but I was pulling a 14-foot dump trailer filled with trees. And it's not a good experience. You know, I put brand new brakes on my truck. You know, I actually put brand new rotors and pads. You know, these are high performance ones and something went really wrong with the pads and they would not stop the truck and it was horrible. So I was having to use the trailer brakes and it took about three miles to finally get stopped. And it was scary. You know, you're trying to slow down without burning up the trailer brakes because ultimately the trailer brakes is what was working. But they were drum brakes, and those things were smoking hot when they were done. I haven't taken the wheels apart yet, but I know I'm going to have to do some, some replace the, at least the shoes. Maybe not the drums, but at least the shoes. You know, that's how hot it got. So you don't want to lose brakes on a hill, man. It is scary. And depending on how much traffic there is, it can be, you know, all bets are off. You might not make it home that day. So the advantage of having disc brakes now over drum brakes is for one thing they're going to stop the vehicle but they don't need to be adjusted because they're hydraulic and let me emphasize that it's hydraulic so you have an electric signal that goes to a master cylinder on the tongue of the trailer that when it gets that signal it push it turns into hydraulic at that point it's electric over hydraulic is what they call it but the disc brakes be, are hydraulic so they work good and they don't have to be adjusted just like on your car if you if you only have front disc brakes they never need to be adjusted if you have four-wheel disc brakes technically they never have to be adjusted and then with that being the case you don't have to adjust the brake controller you can just leave it alone and the stopping power can increase by 50 percent so you go from 600 pounds of braking pounds to 1500 pounds of braking so that's a huge change. That's a huge advantage. And there's less moving parts. There's less maintenance with disc brakes. So now making the switch from drum brakes to trailer brakes could be a little bit of a chore. You know, you got to weigh the cost. You know, you're looking at at least $2,000 to do this, depending on your trailer, the size of the axles and so forth. So you're going to start out about $2,000 minimum. 
But, you know, the money's well worth it if you have it. If you can budget that, it's well worth it. Now, it also depends on how much you use your trailer, where you're at. I mean, if you use your trailer twice a year and you get maybe a month's worth of use out of it, probably not worth putting on disc brakes unless you just absolutely feel you need to have them. Maybe there's an area where you go all the time, steep hills, and you're just tired of, you know, sweating that out every time. It's a white-knuckle drive. Well, disc brakes might be the solution. You know, I have a friend who put a Jake brake on his Dodge truck because of one grade here in Montana. In fact, it's the grade where my brakes went out. But he put a Jake brake on there that cost him almost $3,000. And all he did was for basically one hill. There's one thing you have to be sure of when you do this. Now, if you're going to do it yourself, you want to get a complete kit. Do not buy parts and pieces and try to piece this thing together yourself. This disc brake stuff has been kind of a black hole. And oddly enough, Dexter Axel owns the two companies that make disc brakes. You know, they bought them over the span of some years. Dexter Axel can barely even give you information on this. I spent, well, this has been two years in the making before I was brave enough to speak out on this because it was so confusing and such a mess out there. You know, I talked to suppliers that we have. Now, these guys supply the RV industry. You know, they sell everything under the sun. And when it comes to disc brakes, well, you know, we can piece together a kit for you. You just need to tell us what you have, and we can probably get that done. And, you know, we might get some things right, might get some things wrong. It's like, no, it won't work. You know, it's got to be right every time. Because if you piece it together, you're going to be missing things. You're going to be uncertain about what you're getting. You're not going to have a good warranty. You're not going to have good instructions. You're not going to have somebody backing you on how to do it. If they don't sell a complete kit, walk away from it. Now, this is where a company comes in called Performance Trailer Braking. It's performancetrailerbraking.com. And if you go to their website and you order anything, you make sure you talk to them and tell them Eric at the Smart RVer sent you to them. Okay? I don't get any money for that, but I want them to know that I'm sending people their way. So please tell them that because these guys have it together and ask for Michael. He'll probably answer the phone. This guy's got all the information. He knows the history of disc brakes in the RV industry. They're a small family owned business. They love what they do. They live for what they do. That's the kind of company you want to deal with. If you have a problem, they're going to help you. If you have warranty, they can handle it. In fact, their warranty is pretty cool because let's say you have a, you buy one of their systems and it's Dexter, you know, Dexter makes whichever brand they have or you end up and it changes that if a caliper goes bad and it's under warranty, they just send you a new one. They don't have to get an okay from Dexter or they don't send you to Dexter to do a warranty. They take care of you. So they are authorized by Dexter to do that. And that's a huge thing because that's not very common in the RV industry. Okay. So that's a, a plus. And also the brake pads that come with them are all ceramic and that's the latest technology. So you're, you're right up to speed with the technology, but performance trailer breaking.com. Tell them Eric at the smart RV or podcast sent you to them. Even if you just buy online, you figure out what you need, put it in the comments box. Let them know. Like I said, I don't get anything for that. I just want them to know the people I talk to and the people that I want to give this great information to are letting them know. That's all. Because, you know, I feel like we have a connection, and I want them to understand that, and then they can have that connection with you too is for great service. Because if you guys go with them, you get everything in the kit, and – you will recommend them to other people because these guys have it together. And like I said, you know, this is two years in the making. You know, I've gave, gave up on it for a long time. Believe me, I wasn't working on this every day for two years, but I just gave up on this. I said, this thing just is a black hole. And after talking to people at Dexter and just distributors and trying to chase this down, it took a long time to piece this thing together. But disc brakes are the thing for you to go to. If you have a need for them, make the switch. It's going to be worth it. And I will have a link to performance trailer breaking.com in this episode, number 97 on the smart RV or dot, uh, dot com. I will also have information about them. And there's also a page now that we've put up called products. We recommend 
And I'll be honest with you, some of those products, if you like Battery Cables USA, we get a small commission if you uh, t- follow that link and buy something through them. Wear Safe GPS, the same thing. You follow the link and use the promo code and save 10%. You know, we get a, a, a small commission. It's not much, but, you know, anything to help fund the show pays off. So that's why we're pushing it. But there's only things we recommend. If we don't recommend it, it's not going to be on our website. In fact, I'll come out and say it. I think you know that by now. If you've been listening to the show for any length of time, I'm just going to say what I think about products. All right, so we're coming up to the next segment of our show, which is Next Stop. And Alexis is on the show with us today, and she's the one who writes up all the articles for Next Stop, and she puts them on the website and does all that. So she's our in-house destination guru for RVing. So Arches National Park is on the menu today, and it's located in Utah. I'm sure all of you know that. But Alexis, why does Arches National Park have the name or have that name? Yeah, that's a really good question. Well, you know, this park is so unique. It has over 2,000 documented arches and other amazing geological formations. Okay, so it's because of the arches, documented (laughs) ones even. All right, so that's pretty cool, 2,000 of them. So that's a lot of arches to see there. Now, if I'm going to the park, besides all the arches, obviously this is Utah, so it's got that red rock and white sand look all blended together. What would three other things for me to see in the park be to make this trip really worth my while? Mm, Yeah, Um, I would say I would check out Balanced Rock. That one is incredible. It stands at 128 feet, and it kind of looks like it's teetering. And then there's Tower Arch, which is a huge arch, 92 feet tall so you've got to check out that one it's just amazing and there's even one called spectacles it because it looks like a giant pair of glasses well that sounds pretty cool so there's three things there well besides all the arches so that makes the trip very (laughs) worthwhile i like that so now i've heard that arches national park is kind of in no man's land so does that mean that viewing stars at night would be better than other places you know i'm so glad you brought that up yeah it's it's known for its dark night skies they have virtually zero light pollution um, making the park just ideal for that kind of thing and you know you can go out and stargaze on your own or you can go with a ranger it's pretty great okay so a ranger would probably be able to take you all them coolest places where you can really see stuff in certain um formations yeah that'd be nice that sounds pretty good now, what about eating? You know, you do all this exercise, hiking and stuff. Um, they got food there? Yeah, they've got some good places to grab some grub. Um, there's ones like, uh, they've got Thai food, Arches Thai, Glorious Corner Cafe, and uh, there's always Zax's. Zax's, the old standby. No, it's Glorious Cafe. Cafes always sound good in little small towns. They have a <laughs> unique flavor with their food. I always like going to a cafe in a little town someplace. So that sounds pretty good. So there's food and plenty to do there. Now, what about bringing my RV there? Are there RV parks, places just for me to go to? Yeah, you know, Eric, there are there's just a plethora of places. I mean, all you'd have to do is type it into Google and so many places would pop up. So all right. So are there any RV parks there with resort in their name? Yeah. Portal RV Resort is a really good option. They have several amenities, you know, for you. There's also more rustic ones like Seven Miles RV Park. Pretty much just a place to park your RV. Okay, cool. Because resort, you know, always has a little bit more, you know. So if you like that resort flavor, there you go. <laughs> so it has something for everybody, it sounds like. So now I'm going to plan my trip. When should I go? That's a great question. I mean, any time you go, you're just going to be blown away by how beautiful it is there. But I think the best months to go would probably be April through May, weather-wise. All right, very good. So the winter time would probably be a little colder. Mm-hmm. Fall would probably be chillier. Yep. So want to avoid that unless you like that type of weather. And obviously, <laughs> there's less people, so that might be good. Mm-hmm. So, hey, that sounds good. So I'm glad we talked about this. Nice little uh, tease for everybody to go to the website or to spur their imagination on and to get out on the road and use their rv so that was a nice little adventure into the arches national park you know many rvs out there and what made me think of this is the sunshine you know burning down on utah have many rvs have slide out awning fabrics that are failing they're falling apart they're getting old and i'm sure you own an rv that has a slide out on it with a slide out awning So if you need a fabric, you've got to check out 
what we make at sunpromfg.com. There's going to be a link on our website under products we recommend and in this episode number 97 with the promo code that you'll save 10%. So if you go to the smartrvr.com and you use the promo code, which off the top of my head, I think it's the smart RVer, and you get 10% off. But go to this website, the smartrvr.com under episode 97, and it'll be there, the link and the promo code. You don't necessarily have to use the link, but you have to use the promo code. The Sun Pro Manufacturing slide out awnings have a three or five year warranty depending on the fabric and all the information is there. And of course, if you have a question, you can call and talk to us. We will walk you through the entire process of replacing your slide out awning fabric with a nice quality one, much better than what came on it from the factory. Okay, so now RV Envy. There's nothing better than having an RV where people are looking at it and they just love what they see. You have someone over for dinner or lunch and they just love your rv well there's something about it that's just really cool and i guess i've i like that because i've always had certain vehicles that have always kind of stood out there's something about them you know people like them and not that they're super hot you just do it your way you know you make it kind of cool you do it how you want to do it well it actually got me on this i was going through the cabinets in my trailer the other day and I was looking at the plates and utensils. And I'm thinking, man, what a train wreck this is. We used to have all matching stuff. And now it's like, you know, it looks like we stole it all from different restaurants as we traveled around the country. We didn't do that. But, you know, that's in matches. It doesn't even look good together. I know mismatched dinnerware and stuff is kind of a trend and looks cool, but not in this case. I'm thinking we got to do something about this. Even if we sell the RV, we're going to get a new one. And we got to have nice looking stuff. And it's not that... We have to do it to keep up with anybody or anything. It's just, it looks nicer. You feel nicer about it. When you're eating on a plates that all look together, it looks nice. So what I'm getting at here is when it comes to your dinnerware, utensils, cups, plates, bowls, gosh, blankets, there is so much RV related product out there or merchandise. It's unbelievable. Like there's a company called Camp, Camp Casual. And then Camco makes life at the campground. So they have all sorts of products that are RV related. Blankets, mugs, plates, bowls, you name it. There's so much and it just looks so cool. Because, you know, when you're out eating, you're in your RV. And, you know, you have someone over. Everything looks nice. It matches. It's got that RV theme, you know, different things on it. And it's cool. It's nice looking. And a lot of that stuff you can mix and match brands because it's not going to matter because it's all rv themed and talk about living the rv lifestyle when you have that you know it really says something because it makes you more aware of what you're doing and how much you enjoy it because it's fun it's making memories and that's what's important making those memories this is all part of the package you know you take some pictures someone's you know maybe out underneath the awning eating you want to get a picture of it maybe it's your kids there you go you got this rv dinnerware right in front of you That's part of the RV lifestyle, not just how cute it was to get that picture, but it all makes this RV lifestyle package come together. And there's gobs of this stuff. I mean, you can go to RV stores and buy it, which is what I always recommend, or you can go online and buy it. I mean, there's tons of it, and you can get pictures for the wall that are RV-related, clocks. I mean, you get everything. It's cool. So check that out. That's just another aspect of RV Envy. You know, the, the plates and stuff sometimes are put away in the cabinet and you don't see them until you bring them out. But when you bring them out, they make a statement that you enjoy the RV lifestyle. It's who you are. It's what you enjoy. And it's an awesome memory maker or part of the memories when you're making them. So check out your local RV store, see what they have in stock or see what they can get. It doesn't matter if they have in stock. They can always order this stuff and believe me, they can get it. Just as quick as Amazon in most cases and probably a better price. Amazon does not always have the lowest price and they don't always get to you the quickest. So yeah, I know. I don't want to keep going on about Amazon. Like I said, they do have some good products there. Just that's my opinion about supporting the RV industry. One final thing here. Wear safe GPS trackers for RVs are an awesome little tool that you can get for your RV to help protect it when it's in storage, parked on your property, a storage facility, at a dealership, wherever it might be. And if you go to the smartrver.com, 
under the tab that says more click on the products we recommend and you'll find a link to wear safe gps trackers and a promo code that saves you 10 percent if you purchase anything using that link and promo code so do that if you want to help protect your rv or give it a little more protection while it's in storage or not being used heck even when you're out rving you know you never know when someone might decide to try to steal your rv so do that and you can save 10 percent all right so i want to thank everybody today for listening to the show episode number 97 we're coming up on that 100th episode and like i said i'll let you know when we get closer where we're going to have that episode live streamed so this is eric stark with the smart rv or podcast it has been a great hanging out with you today if i don't see you on the road let's connect it to smartrver.com.